So, Unnatural Vegan doesn't seem to know anything about social justice. This is a world, this is a world premiere. This is a world. Um, this is a response video to Unnatural Vegan's video, Why I Am Not an Intersectional Social Justice Vegan. I'm glad, Sways, that you point out the fact that you are addressing an obnoxious vocal minority. But then again, you still, you kind of lump all intersectional vegans and social justice vegans into a big lump. You, you say that the intersectionality and social justice veganism erodes the philosophical and political credibility of veganism. Generally speaking, you also seem to completely miss the fact that intersectional and social justice advocates are in the unique position to bring veganism to the table in ways that make sense to women, minorities, trans people, other oppressed groups, by showing links that do exist and providing historical evidence and other facts that they, that may be relevant to those groups who may, may see themselves and their issues as separate. What I'm saying here is we might actually be able to introduce veganism to other groups who are the targets of oppressive action by showing them where these links exist. So instead of kind of scaring people away from veganism, what intersectionality and social justice might actually be doing is bringing more people to the vegan table. Also, you know, also talking about intersectionality as a belief system that tries to link all supposed evils in the world, that isn't intersectionality by any definition that I was able to find or that I had previously understood. Intersectionality is concerned with the interconnected nature of social categories such as race, class, gender, as they apply to a given individual or a group. Through an awareness of intersectionality, we can better acknowledge and ground the differences among us. Social justice is concerned with the way in which human rights are manifested in the everyday lives of people at every level of society. And these are things that are often measurable. And in cases where we see that things aren't equitable, there can be corrections made. Corrections made without penalizing anyone. In social justice, there is so much uh, time committed to analysis of systems of oppression. So it's really impossible for someone just to claim to be a victim without presenting a case of how this you know, lack of equity, this lack of fair access to rights is being just demonstrated, is being played out. Could you be specific? Can you talk about the groups, the specific groups that you are criticizing here? So again, that you're not lumping every person who's a member of a social justice movement or anyone who claims to have an, inter an intersectional approach to their work just won't be lumped into one big group. You know, if something's been shown through data to be true over and over again, and yet there are others who want to deny you know, this reality, um, or somebody who engages in a debate and they haven't even bothered to look up the definition of the thing that they're criticizing, that can be very frustrating. If you really want to understand oppression, get to know some people. <laughs> go, you know, you know, go into communities where, you know, the people who are claiming that they are oppressed and that they are dealing with oppression, go be with them in their, you know, homes, in their neighborhoods, in their communities, you know, spend some time there and get to feel it and know it yourself and then make your criticism of it, right? Don't base it on what you heard or don't expect that hearing about it is going to make you necessarily believe it. It's not calling you a sexist. It's not calling you a racist. It's just saying that you're maybe a little bit ignorant here and a little bit arrogant in assuming that you can understand something without at least investigating it for yourself. You think that, um, you know, people not having the energy to explain to every person who has the privilege not to experience an oppression leads to those people being removed from reality when it might just be the person who is lacking in the experience who is really out of touch. Again, just go, get to know some people. You say, you talk about what intersectionalists typically believe. I'd like to know how you know what they believe. Um, I would love to like hear a quote from somebody who is a credible source, like perhaps even Dr. Crenshaw, who coined the term intersectionality. I don't know if you're talking about social justice or intersectionality when you say that 
Uh, there is a belief that all problems are linked and they cannot be solved alone. I think that's just a gross generalization. There is, you know, I mean, we do understand that there are, you know, ecosystems and that things within those ecosystems are interconnected and that you can't really just isolate one thing within an ecosystem without understanding how it has effects throughout that ecosystem. When we are seeking solutions to one problem in the world, we have to think about what implications there are outside of the realm of that problem. We just have to agree that no one should be oppressed. <laughs> and if we can agree that no one should be oppressed as we enter into our work, we're gonna be looking to make sure that whatever solution we come up with isn't going to be creating problems down the line for someone else. This idea that somebody has to sign on to everything at the same time, again, it's just an absolutely ridiculous idea, right? But understanding that once someone has been activated, that they might be able to be activated around other issues is actually a pretty kind of smart and efficient way to look at moving things forward in the world. And in fact, that's how I got to veganism in the first place, when I had been focused on issues of racism and the LGBTQIA plus community. And I'm not even that smart. Now, I can agree that single issue causes are essential to social and political change. However, as I said, it's crucial to understand how efforts in any one area are gonna have effects in other areas. It's pretty simple. Unnatural Vegan says that by being intersectional, you're gonna end up alone. But again, that is so antithetical to the nature of intersectional thinking. Intersectionality is about trying to find the connections where people had not considered those intersections before. What leads someone to being alone is thinking that their experience and their needs are the only ones that count, the only ones that matter, and never looking outside of their individual needs. A person's political leanings have nothing to do with it once they've accepted that we all are part of the same moral community and all deserve access to the same rights. Unnatural Vegan says it sucks to work with people that we don't like. Yeah, it's true. It does suck to work with people that we don't like, but it sucks even more to work with people who don't even recognize our humanity, that don't even recognize that we should be considered as part of the moral community to begin with. Unnatural Vegan says that good consequences outweigh ideological purity. Well, it depends, doesn't it? I mean, if your ideological purity is that you be recognized as a being worthy of inclusion in the moral community, then it seems fair that would be a deal breaker. A natural vegan gives the example, do we believe in a society that people have the right to harm someone because they've harmed you? If it's commonly accepted that if someone punches you in the face, you punch them in the face back, and then one person punches another in the face, and when the other person tries to punch them back, we say, no, 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 you can't punch them back, then that's not justice. However, we don't live in a society where if someone punches you in the face, you have the right to punch them back. We live in a society where if someone punches you in the face, you bring them up on assault charges, and then you let the system deal with it. So as long as anytime somebody is getting punched in the face, the system comes in and acts and behaves in the same way, then that's social justice. So then Unnatural Vegan gives this example of if there are two people and one person has no food and then another person has just enough food to survive, is it justice to divide the food and then both of them die? What would be justice in that situation is what would be commonly accepted. If the person who had food has the right to survive and the person who doesn't have food, unfortunately has to suffer the consequences, then it's justice for that person who came with the food to eat the food that they brought and to be able to survive. It's not necessarily a question of fairness. It's a question of what has been decided as just by the society. There's a graphic shown in Unnatural Vegan's video that shows this kind of social justice and then this, you know, unnamed period of time and then us reaching paradise. And I don't think that there's anyone who says that social justice will lead to paradise. It might, however, improve the lives of people who suffer unnecessarily. Like for example, the 21,000 children who die every day from preventable causes just because there are people who don't want to consider that there might be better ways to distribute resources. Specifically when a lot of the resources <laughs> are coming from those areas where people are dying of starvation and they're being sent to other places in the world where people are dying from overconsumption.
you should look up the term social justice. You should look up the term intersectionality <laughs> before you go and try to talk about them. You would understand that there is a lot more mathematics involved in social justice and in intersectionality because these things are concerned with quantity, the quantity of what's available and seeing that those things can be distributed in a way that is fair enough for everybody to benefit from them. Why is it so unreasonable to want to have a conversation about how to take the excess from one place and distribute it to a place where there is a lack of resources? And that's resources in terms of actual tangible goods. It's resources in terms of access to power as well. You know, I agree that we should not fall into traps of answering arguments with rhetoric like accusing of racism and victim blaming. I also think that those who haven't analyzed these phenomenon should be open to see the role that they may be playing in perpetuating them. The patriarchy may not be responsible for the world's ills, but patriarchy as the dominant mode of operating in the world may contribute to more than one of the world's ills. Uh, a natural vegan says there's no evidence that to end one social ill, you have to tackle all of them simultaneously. Who tries to do that? Again, I, please give us some examples of who it is that is trying to tackle all of the world's ills simultaneously. I would love to be able to, I'll make a video about them too. To assume that we have to take on all the world's ills to be able to solve anyone assumes that there's anyone claiming to have even a knowledge of all the world's ills. Who says that? But that doesn't mean that we can't attempt to see how several issues are connected and develop solutions that resolve several ills at the same time. It's not an all or nothing proposition, sways. <laughs> Come on. A natural vegan says that struggles for social progress only realize results by remaining focused. I'm gonna look at a real world issue, one that I worked on in New York City, and that was stop and frisk. And that was the fact that the police were stopping hundreds of thousands of individuals every single year. And that number was increasing by 100,000 every year. To work on that issue, we had to pull together people from the trans community, minority communities, the homeless community, mental health communities, youth groups, immigrant communities who had, all of these groups had their own particular relation to that problem. It took all of those people coming together to change the policy. And now the number of people affected by that policy has been decreasing every year. This kind of coalition building happens all the time. It's how work gets done. So again, a natural vegan, I wanna know what you're basing your knowledge of how social justice movements work effectively. I want to understand where your definition of intersectionality is coming from. I don't know, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm actually the only person engaged in the social justice movement or the only person who tries to do their work through an intersectional lens who believes the way that I do, but I'd want to see numbers to prove it. That's it for this video. Like it if you like it. Share, comment, subscribe. This is Reg signing off. Love yourself. Peace. And I love myself.